Hey everyone, I'm inserting this voiceover post-editing. I originally intended this to be just like top 12 all one video, but when I edited down the footage, it was about an hour long. So in the interest of not uploading a video that's an hour long, I decided to break it into a few parts. So this is part one. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a 2019 rewind, but it's going to be about the top 12 scandals instead. You know, 12 months, 12 scandals. So, and I want to say this year has been really wild for the drama. I mean, we had Drama Get It 2, we had Lipstick Gate, we had a bunch of other scandals. We had Olivia Jade and Lori Loughlin being in trouble with the college admissions and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm just going to get into it right now. As I said a moment ago, instead of a traditional rewind, I'm going to be doing a top 12 scandals of 2019 instead. Now, please don't be offended by how I rank these scandals. Some of them, I honestly didn't know where to put them because some of them were just as bad as the other. I just just had to go random and pick them and I just didn't know where to put some of them. I'm not going to be reading receipts in this video and I'm not going to be playing any clips from anyone's video, especially Snapchat and YouTube, because a lot of the people that are discussed in this video like the strike people and plus I wanted to just be relaying the information and keeping it short and sweet and to the point. I mean, we all know how short and sweet means to me. It's probably going to be like a 20-30 minute video. Sure, Jan. Number 12 is the Lori Loughlin, Felicity Hoffman, and Olivia Jade college admission scandal. On March 12, 40 plus people were caught scamming their college admission systems and they were trying to get their kids into college by bri basically bribing the schools to get them into these prestigious schools. And these universities were very prestigious and among these 40 people were Felicity Hoffman, Lori Loughlin, aka Aunt Becky from Full House, and her daughter Olivia Jade who is a YouTuber and a beauty influencer. Influencer. I don't know if you want to call her a beauty influencer. I mean, I've seen she did beauty videos before and, and I know that she has a collaboration with Sephora that got pulled as a result of this scandal, speaking of. And this scandal was cited as one of the largest scams due to the amount of people that were involved and all the money that was involved. Anyway, Lori Loughlin, who I'm going to call Aunt Becky from now on, as I just said a few seconds ago, bribed to school $500,000 to have two of her daughters, Olivia and Bella, attend the school. Olivia Jade had over 2 million subscribers subscribers on YouTube before this scandal and now right now she's at 1.95 million subscribers post scandal. She did not upload for almost a year. I want to say it's like eight months or nine months but there was a video that she did and it was called hi again and it was not received well at all and she didn't really explain anything. It was a two minute video and she said a whole lot of nothing. It was pretty pointless actually I thought and she was just saying like oh well I can't talk about this. I've been gone for a while but I can't talk about this for legal reasons etc 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 it was just a really pointless video i think she knew that it was december and it's no secret if you know anything about youtube and advertising and how ads work you'll know that december is the month that pays the most for ad revenue so maybe she wanted to hop in on that sweet sweet ad sense i have no idea as for that video the likes to dislike ratio Yikes. As for the possible prison sentences that Lori and Felicity are both facing, they're at least facing a decade each in prison. So who knows how Lori will be sentenced. I guess she's sitting there crossing her fingers like, yeah, hope. <laughs> Maybe I'll get two weeks too. But <laughs> I mean, who knows? We're going to find out probably in 2020. Maybe by the end of this year. On to number 11 was the Trisha Paytas coming out as video. Now this is another scandal that I felt passionately about. And Trisha uploaded a video where she claimed to be coming out from female to male. I mean, I know Trisha, it's no secret that she's intentionally controversial. I know she trolls a lot. I know that she does a lot of questionable things for attention and views. I don't know. She's Trisha Paytas. <laughs> That's all I can say. She uploaded a video called I am transgender female to male on October 12th. Anyway, she also made several offensive statements and claims. She also identified as a drag queen in the same video and perhaps the most offensive statement that set everyone off in the video was when she said that she 1000% thinks that she's male but also 1000% identifies with her born gender which is female and that she has no plans to 
Shit. When I saw this video, I'm just gonna say my mind was absolutely blown. I've seen tons of LGBT people coming after her. I've seen Blair White and Eden Dahl, Gigi Gorgeous all talked about it. I saw drag queens like Vicky Vox talking about it and they did a huge Twitter thread and they even got into it with Trisha at one point during the thread. I mean, this all blows my mind because Trisha has done a lot of things to insult people. I mean, a lot of people didn't take her seriously because she's the same person that came out as a chicken nugget in one of her videos and people were rightfully pissed and even though they knew that she was trolling they were still hurt i mean just because she's trolling and doing it to be funny it doesn't mean people aren't going to be hurt by it you know what i mean and also to be noted a few weeks later she married a cardboard cutout of brad pitt <laughs> I rest my case. 10 is a Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Concealer Warehouse Heist. In March, Jeffree Star made it known when he did a video called My Concealer Line Was Stolen and Leaked $2.5 Million in Makeup Hijacked. In his video, he discussed everything, how it happened, and how law enforcement are on it, but most importantly of all, he talked about how he felt violated by this and how he's never had to deal with something like this. He had a lot of concealers that he launched. I think it was like 30 shades and then he had like two or three colors correctors and the shade that was stolen the most was the shade c5 in this video he also spoke about how these concealers were not only stolen but they were being circulated around on the black market that in itself is very dangerous and i did a video back when all this happened pointing this very thing out and how more often than not the money that is earned via the black market is used to fund things such as organized crime and human trafficking among other things now i did a video on this and i will link it down below and i discussed how the black market works i mean i'm not like an insider of the black market but i did discuss like from the research that i did on it when all this happened about a month later jeffrey came forward with an update of sorts and said that there were six people involved and that one out of the six people is in custody with law enforcement and then said that he believes this was an inside job in the video that he originally did about the concealers where he talked about how he was robbed and hijacked talked about how his concealers were robbed he said in the video as well as on twitter that he did not think this was an inside job and did not think that it was an employee. However, he changed his mind and he does think it's an inside job. Aside from the docuseries that he did very recently with Shane Dawson, he's not mentioned this heist in any form or fashion, so I'm led to believe that the other five criminals that were involved in pulling off this heist are still at large. Nine is Gabby Hanna versus Trisha Paytas. In November, Gabby Hanna, a popular musician and YouTuber, took to her social media, mainly her Instagram stories, to ask her audience if they knew if a friend had an S day would they go ahead and warn this friend's potential partners and in a few of the slides she put up a poll it was like one of those yes no things that are on like the instagram stories and it was literally torn but i mean i'm gonna say that more people said yes than no and later on that same day it was revealed that the friend that she was talking about was trisha paytas because trisha started popping off on social media which is not really surprising but with this time she had every right to do so and that was because gabby posted screenshots of text messages between between the two from a few years ago discussing this very topic and so people went after Trisha but more people were going after Gabby after everything because Trisha dropped some receipts of her own and more people believed Trisha so all I'm gonna say is that this backfired horribly on Gabby and Trisha emerged as the victor I mean usually she's the one that's not victorious in many scandals but so that but this one she was numerous tweets resurfaced courtesy of the up-and-coming drama channel coming to you in 2020 named allegedly Angelo. Yes, I am holding you to it, Angelo. You are going to do a drama channel. <laughs> he found some old tweets of Gabby seemingly bragging about sleeping around with people when she had an herself i was gonna do a video on it but i just i just lost interest and it just got too disturbing i just didn't i didn't want to do a video and when i say things were too disturbing for me to talk about it turned out that one of gabby's friends was assaulted and violated by a man who is also gabby's friend and she took the guy's side and not only that she went at great lengths to discredit her friend that's vile number eight is britney dawn fitness oh this was a big scam 
big time. Because in February, a fitness influencer by the name of Brittany Dawn Fitness had several fans and you know it's several dozens and eventually thousands of fans came forward and said that they hired her as a personal trainer and she did not make good on her transaction. They paid her a lot of money for her services for customized plans, meal plans, exercise, workout routines, and she never delivered on the goods. And to make things worse, all these plans she charged a few hundred dollars for. Now that's a lot of money if you ask me. Now I've seen personal trainers in gyms in person as well as nutritionists and they were never that expensive. I mean, wow. Like when I had consultations, I paid not even 25% of that fee. Anyway, more and more people began to come forward because she did a video where she apologized for it and it was not received well because she was sitting there and she had a drying machine in the background going off and making noise and you could barely hear her. So she was heavily criticized for that. And as for the amount of people that were scammed, it ended up being over 5,000 people because there was a Facebook group called Brittany Dawn Scams and a lot of people were talking about it, doing research on her and investigating. And a lot of people realized that these plans that were supposed to be customized were not customized at all. They were either copied and pasted from the internet, another template, or she just gave the same plan to everyone and it wasn't even customized. I mean, could you imagine paying a personal trainer a few hundred dollars, no less, only to just get scammed and get a generic plan that everyone else got that purchased from her? Wow. Mine. Bloom. And back to her apology video, she must have attended Laura Lee's seminars on how to apologize because she was doing fake tears. And as I said, she had a drying machine in the background that was really loud and you couldn't even hardly hear what she was saying the whole time. And I think it had like a 98% downvote to upvote ratio, meaning the 98% of people downvoted it. But back to the Facebook group, a lot of people in there found out that Brittany and her mom were allegedly caught up in other scams and they were calling that out and digging it up and everything. I have not heard much about this ever since then for like the last several months. I know a lot of people still criticize her and bring it up because she still hasn't paid people back to this day. And that's another thing too. She was saying that she was issuing refunds and not only was she issuing partial refunds to some of these people, but she would actually issue the refund and then wait a few days and then she would file a dispute with PayPal and get her refund back. So these people were not getting paid. Like basically they paid her twice and got scammed twice. But anyway, like the last I heard several months ago was that she was being investigated on a federal level as well as the attorney general in her local area was investigating her as well. I don't know if there has been a conclusion to that. You know, maybe after this video, I'm going to go and do a little bit of digging and see if there's any updates for that. I did do a series on Brittany Dawn. I did three videos about her scams and I also did a video about all of her undisclosed ads. So I will definitely link my series down below so you can check it out and be more educated on the scams because I did a very in-depth series about it. And you know me, I like to go deep and do some deep dives in addition to commentary, so... <laughs> Anyway, that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed part one. Stay tuned tomorrow for part two. Bye.